when you have rainfall excess, okay, this is a precipitation that doesn't infiltrate, right? And becomes runoff. And it is uh, neither retained um, nor infiltrated. Okay, so you have your input, which is rainfall that uh, has some uh, abstraction. So you must account for abstractions. So this would be like puddling or infiltration. And then whatever's left over is your rainfall excess. So just kind of leaving that up so you can see it. So you'd have, so we've drawn this a few times, right? Where we have uh, rainfall rate, we have time, and let's say we have some rate that looks like this. This is your precipitation, okay. Okay, and then let's say you have some extract, uh, abstraction rate, so kind of going back to the what we learned from our uh, infiltration section. So we'd have something that looks like this, right? So this would be our abstractions, okay? So then everything remaining, right? Here, 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 and here. Uh, this would be our rainfall excess, okay? Now, there are several methods um, that we can use to estimate our rainfall excess. We're going to discuss uh, five useful, oops, what does it look like a, useful uh, flow rate calculations. Okay. So the first is called uh, a unit hydrograph. UH, which predicts stream flow for a given watershed. Um, and so you can essentially, you cannot use this unit hydrograph for multiple different watersheds. It's derived specifically based off of one watershed um, one storm, and that storm must have amounted to one, either one inch or one centimeter of precipitation. So that's kind of the, the rules for using this. Um, so assumptions for the unit hydrograph, it's pretty easy to use once you kind of get um, the basics. So when you, you assume we're using a linear model, okay, the second thing is you assume uh, excess precipitation um, has a constant intensity um, during a period. So this would be like you had experienced uh, five inches um, in an hour. You're just saying that over that hour, you don't know if that five inches happened in the first 10 minutes or the, or the last 30 or sprinkled throughout the day or sprinkled throughout the hour, you know that hour contributes to half an inch. It's, it's something like that, where it's just that intense, that value represents that hourly uh, measurement. Um, you assume that it is uniformly distributed in the watershed. Now, what are some issues with that condition? Do you guys think?
What do you guys think that this might be an issue if you assume uniformly distributed? Do you think that's 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 true based on our discussion of precipitation? No, no, not really. No, um, you would actually a better a better way to get an idea of the of the precipitation in your watershed experience. You should do um, before you get to this uh, unit hydrograph approach. You should probably run either a T sin polygon or isohyatol. Oops. Um, analysis so that you can get a better average for the domain or a better average for the hour. That would probably be better, a better first approach than just assuming it's one gauge as a representation bed. Okay, um, what does uh, assume similar antecedent conditions mean? What does that mean? So previously we talked about some uh, characteristics, some factors that affect runoff. And one of them we said was saturation. And I had said that had to do with antecedent conditions. So uh, when, you're, when you're using a storm and you're saying this storm resulted in one inch of rain or one centimeter of rain, you have some kind of estimate of what the saturation level was before the storm began, okay? So what you're assuming is that uh, the saturation level for another storm that's coming up, you're assuming that it's similar. Why is that, why is that a big assumption? Or why does that matter? What if the saturation level was higher? Wouldn't this just get you like a general idea of like that area condition? Yeah. Like the field conditions in that area? You can just use that as a baseline? Yeah. I'm just kind of under, I'm just trying to, to spark some discussion as to why this could lead to some error. So like if you're assuming that you have a similar antecedent condition, what happens if that if that's incorrect? And what happens if your antecedent conditions are actually more saturated? So you have a higher uh, saturation level for this new storm. How will that uh, affect your, your runoff estimate? Will it be higher or lower? Higher. If it's assuming that the field conditions are more saturated, then you'll have more runoff. Yeah, you're you're so essentially you're under you're underestimating with oh, the unit okay. hydrograph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, yeah, so with the unit hydrograph you're given, you're you're saying that uh, it's actually at a lower saturation level, so your flow is going to be what it is, but it should be actually higher. So that so there's some like what exactly what you said, like it's super useful in getting a general idea, but there are some issues with over simulating under simulating um, based on these assumptions um, and let's see and then the fifth assumption is that a unit hydrograph can be used to derive a discharge or Q from any precipitation excess event. Okay, so something to uh, bring to your attention, when you're estimating your precipitation excess, which I will call PE, your PE is always going to be your precipitation minus any abstractions. So again, if we were to put problems together, right, I would couple abstractions with chapter seven, uh, infiltration to get an estimate of what that abstraction or the total infiltration value would be. And then I would couple that with chapter five, right, to get our precipitation value. And then here we are in chapter 10 to get our precipitation excess. So just keep it in mind how all of these concepts build on each other. Okay. All right. So I've, I've said a unit hydrograph what it is or what the assumptions are. Um, let's have a clear definition for it. So what does a unit hydrograph, sorry, unit 
hydro, not gram, graph, mean, okay. So this is saying that direct runoff Q resulting from uh, either one inch or one centimeter of excess rainfall. So if you are given units of inches, this is going to produce uh, your unit hydrograph should be in units of cubic feet per second. And if you're dealing with uh, one centimeter of excess rainfall, your unit hydrograph units will be in cubic meters per second. Okay. Um, and so if I can give you a kind of a, a visual of what this means. Okay. So let's say you have a, a unit hydrograph. Okay. This means that this storm, right, storm due to one, let's say, it doesn't matter, inch or centimeter of rain, okay? Now, basically what this is saying is this is a linear model. So you can apply this model uh, for a variety of different storm events. So let's say that you actually had two, and let's say it's either inches or centimeters of rain. Okay, so then you would take each of these values and multiply by two to get your new flow rate. So this is Q due to two inches or two centimeters of rain. So it's a linear model in that you can scale it up. Okay, let's say that the storm actually resulted hey, duration, in a half an inch of rain. Well? Sorry? No, it's supposed to be on top of each other. No, it's supposed to be on top of it. I didn't draw it very well. Okay. So let me, there we go. So it'd be like that. Like that? Is this, I didn't, I didn't draw it very well. Isabel, geez. I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> no. no, it's okay. Does that make, does that kind of make sense? Yep. Let me get rid of these stupid X. These are these are what's bothering me. So it looks like that. Is that better? Yep. So yeah, you just kind of scale. You just kind of scale the value up, and you multiply each each value by two, and that'll give you your new flow rate that's due to two inches or centimeters of rain. And you could also have it where, let's say, you have less than an inch. So this green one would be, let's say, a half an inch or centimeters of rain. So again, you multiply the unit hydrograph values by that one half to get your new flow rate. So that's an example of using um, the unit hydrograph for, you know, the same storm period. But let's say that you have multiple precipitation excess, um, uh, you have multiple precipitation excess uh, experienced. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that you, you in one store, in one hour you have like two inches of, of rain, in another hour you have a half an inch of rain, and in another hour you have an inch of rain, something like that. So let's write that down. So hour one, you have a one inch. Hour two, you have a half an inch. And then hour three, you have two inches, whatever. So for this first, for this first hour, since you have only one inch, this is equal, gonna be equal to your unit hydrograph. So let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's say it's a little, it's a little thing. Let's say it looks like that. Ah. Okay. 
Now, for the next hour, we're not starting at zero. We're going to start at the one point, right? And we're actually going to have a smaller storm uh, over the same period, right? Because it's going to be unit hydrograph multiplied by half. So it's going to go look something like that. Does everyone see that? Okay. Then on hour three, we're starting now at the uh, the next hour observa of observation, and now we're multiplying this unit hydrograph by two. Okay, so this is unit hydrograph multiplied by two. This is unit hydrograph multiplied by one half, and this is just the unit hydrograph. Okay, but your total flow is actually going to be the summation of the flow over the hour. So it's actually gonna look something like this. So this is gonna be your total flow over the hour. Does everybody kind of have a visual of how this is gonna work? Why does it go from zero to three, one to four, two to five? Why does it go from zero to three, one to four? Okay, so you're, you're essentially applying this unit hydrograph um, over the given period. So, so in this example, it was a one, two, three hour unit hydrograph. Uh -huh. Okay, and this one, three hour unit hydrograph uh, provided one inch of rain. So you're taking that same unit hydrograph and you're just applying it over the entire duration. So in this case, it was a, a three hour storm. So you apply it three times. And your unit hydrograph observations were every hour. Okay, so it's just an, it's just an example for this case. I'm going to have a numerical example, which I think will help kind of better explain this. This okay. is just yeah, I think this uh, is. I'll definitely yeah. wait till then. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. This is a. It's just a visual example of kind of how you apply it. Again, you just take the unit hydrograph and you multiply it by the precipitation value, and then you sum over the hour. So let's <laughs> let's do an let's get an let's get an example going for that. Okay, so this is just the table. I'm gonna kind of fill it in on the top here. So remember, precipitation excess was your precipitation minus any abstraction. So let's read the problem statement. So the one hour unit hydrograph for a watershed is given below. Determine the runoff from this watershed for the storm pattern given. So here's my unit hydrograph given that I just transposed here. So they're the same. The abstractions have a constant rate of 0.3 inches per hour. So basically my precipitation excess is going to be P minus 0.3 inches per hour. And my precipitation is already in inches per hour, okay? So what you're going to do is at the top of this table is you're going to, you're going to put your precipitation excess. Um, looks like we have one, two, three, four hours of precipitation. And that four hours of precipitation, according to the unit hydrograph, uh, will, will, will uh, turn into approximately one, two, three, four, five, six hours of flow for one inch given it, if there's one inch of rain. Okay, so we start at the top and let's write on the top here. So this is going to be 0.5 minus 0.3, which is 0.2, okay? Um, this is going to be one minus 0.3, which is going to be 0.7. This, and this is inches, this is inches. And this is going to be 0.5 minus 0.3, which is 1.2. And this is 0.5 minus 0.3, which again is 0 0.2 inches. Everybody okay? Okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply um, each, you're gonna multiply uh, each column so each precipitation excess by the unit hydrograph. So this is going to be for hour one. It's going to start at zero because your unit hydrograph starts at zero here. This is for your hour two. This is not going to start at the beginning. You're going to skip an hour. This is for hour three. 
You're gonna skip two hours. And this is for hour four. You're gonna skip three hours. So you start at four. Hour three starts at three, sorry, starts at three. And, and so the calculation part is just gonna be the precipitation excess multiplied by the unit hydrograph. So on the side here, it's gonna be PE multiplied by the unit hydrograph, okay? So in this case, it's going to be 0 0.2 multiplied by zero is the first hour of the unit hydrograph, right? This is going to be zero. Then we have 0 0.2 multiplied by 10 CFS, and that's gonna give us two CFS. We have 0 0.2 multiplied by 100, and that's gonna give us 20. And just keep going down 0 0.2 multiplied by 200 is 40. 0 0.2 multiplied by 150 is 30. And 0 0.2 multiplied by 100 again is 20. 0 0.2, oops. 0 0.2 multiplied by 50 is 10. And 0 0.2 multiplied by zero is zero. So is everybody okay with this so far? Mm -hmm. Let me kind of zoom in here. Okay, cool. Now here's where it gets kind of uh, interesting. So uh, I wish you could see my fingers. Can you, can you see? No, you can't. All right. So now what we're going to do is for our hour two, you still start at the first hour of the unit hydrograph here. Oops. Go down. So you're still going to see these numbers here. These numbers are not going to change. The order is not going to change. So you can go and multiply your new precipitation excess, which is 0 0.7, multiplied by the first value of the unit hydrograph, which is 0. Do you see that? Yes. Same thing. Unit, oh, sorry, this is 0. And then we have 0.7 multiplied by 10. Do you see this number here? 10, the second value of the unit hydrograph, that's seven. 0 0.7 multiplied by 100 is 70. 0 0.7 multiplied by 200, which is 140. And make this bigger. Ah, it won't get any bigger. Uh, 0 0.7 multiplied by 150, which is 105, and then 0 0.7 multiplied by 100 is 70, and 0 0.7 multiplied by 50, which is 35, and then 0 0.7 multiplied by zero, which is zero. So again, just kind of highlighting these are the unit hydrograph values that did not change from the previous step, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill in um, this table here uh, for 1.2. So again, 1.2 multiplied by 10, I'm sorry, by zero is zero. 1.2 multiplied by 10 is 12. 1.0 multiplied by 100 is 120. 1.2 multiplied by 200 is 240, 180, 120, and 60, and 0. Okay, then we have nothing, nothing, nothing. And we start at 0, 2. Actually, it's the same as the first column, right? 20, 40, 30, 20, 10, and 0. Okay, now what I mentioned before was that now you have to take the summation of the Q over the hours, right? Yeah. So now mm -hmm. you take the sum here, which is going to be zero. Then yeah, you I was take the say sum, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you take the sum here, which is going no, to be okay. what? <laughs> which is going to be what? Two? Two. Then you take the sum here, 
120. Which will give us perfect. 122. Good. I remember uh, Dr. William uh, had us uh, do an assignment like this, but it got lost with uh, when my computer got wiped. So two. <laughs> well, now you have it again. That's right. And then 385. And then what? 300. That's right. And then 185. And then 80. 80. That's right. And then you always have a little zero at the end for good measure, right? Does this make sense though? How this all works? I'm hoping the color yeah, is Yeah, because you're of... supposed to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. <clears throat> oh. oh, sorry. It's because I'm just like talking out loud. <laughs> it's it's supposed to start then, at zero. Um, sorry, it ends ahead, in right. zero. Well, yeah, I mean, this is, but this, mm. this, this zero is, this zero hour, like it doesn't really mean anything. It's kind of a, a fudge time frame. Mm -hmm. We know that the real time frame mm -hmm. starts at one. That's when things really start. Right. Yeah. yeah and, so, and with this, we can see that the that in the unit hydrograph, like it shifts over time. Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, so we're this... just we're just mm -hmm. shifting hours down, and then we start at zero. Then we start multiplying our unit hydrograph. Mm -hmm. Yes, our unit hydrograph by our precipitation excess. Yes. Okay, and then we do the summation of the of our basically calculations uh summation of our calculations yes that's where this part comes that's where this this is the the flow rate okay. it's the sum that's why it's the green numbers right the green circles um sharon says what was point three point three was your uh your uh, abstraction abstraction which was in here your abstractions has a constant rate of point three so you take your precipitation rate which in this example was given as a 0.5 and then you subtract 0.5 by 0.3 and that gives you your precipitation excess, which is 0.2. You cannot apply the unit hydrograph just using precip. You have to apply the unit hydrograph to your precipitation excess. And it is possible that uh, a specific hour, let's say there is no precipitation excess. That is absolutely possible. It's possible, you know, and then it just kind of stops. You get no, no unit hydrograph applied for that hour. And then you, sh you still shift down for the next pre precipitation excess and keep going. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Right. Sure. Uh, is the peak flow always um, aligned with the, your, your highest value for UH? Uh, n not in this case, because if you check it out, right, your peak flow uh, happens right here at hour five. Oh, is, I see. Yeah. Which is not corresponding mm -hmm. to when you have your peak of unit hydrograph, which makes sense because you're, sh you're essentially shifting it takes time. Um, your peak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes time for that peak to finally mm -hmm. happen and then for it to finally come down. 